Hey guys, how's it going? I wanted to get a uh, tech demo out for you so you could see uh, a little bit more about what I'm talking about. Um, I guess I can go over a couple things too to kind of show more about what I was talking about in the uh, Reddit post. Uh, first of all, I just want to uh, explain my lab real fast. Right now I have two uh, virtual um, hosts uh, that are running. One of them is the firewall which is up right now and it has a interface that is connected to my local network and then an interface that's uh, segregated off in a, a virtual uh, only network. The other one is the client that would be the one getting blocked or filtered or whatever and um, you can see it's only got one NIC and it's in that same um, virtual network. So that being said, um, let's go and get into the dashboard. So. Basically, the way it's set up is you don't have to do anything, right? Um, when you first, let's say, purchase the product, you get dropped into the dashboard. It's not going to have anything in it. At the bottom, you'll see some uh, server stats, interface stats, uptime, stuff like that. Um, what I'm pretty much trying to do is use licensing to force you to get into the system. For one, to change the default password, two, to change any settings that you might want to change while you're in there and then maybe not even touch it again. Um, but at least it'll get you in here. You'll get a little comfortable. You could browse around and see what's going on. So um, up front, it's just kind of showing you a basic little, hey, this is what we did. Uh, I'm not trying to overload people with information here. Um, I don't expect a lot of people to even um, want to look at this stuff anyway. So that's a uh, um, brings me to the license part. Basically, what you do is uh, you would type in a key that is unique per the device. So I'm not trying to use licensing to um, like do any type of subscription or anything. It's just you have a license and it's connected to the device and that'll kind of just show, hey, this device is like an authorized device and you're not trying to pull the software off and put it on a different device, which wouldn't be supported. Um, after it gets activated, It'll then uh, unlock the software to probe uh, my servers <clears throat> to uh, um, validate itself. And then once it gets validated, it will um, give the device access to the uh, system and signature updates. So I'll go into that real quick. Um, as you can see, like there's some issues with the front end. It's kind of like a, it's supposed to be responsive. So if you're on a phone, it would work as well. Um, to make it a little bit more user friendly, but the responsiveness is a little wonky if you're not looking at it at 1080p or on the phone. So like in between, it's kind of awkward. Um, but you can see here that uh, you can download the domain lists, tour lists, and then system updates. Uh, by All you have to do is click the button, it goes and downloads it in the background um, and takes care of it for you. Um, another cool little thing is you could take uh, configuration backups if you want. And that being said, let me get into kind of the more security part of it. The firewall here has four main uh, uh, like features, a whitelist. Oh, it broke. Okay, let me skip that one. Let's go just go. The whitelist and the blacklist are um, pretty much identical. They both have a time-based and a pre-proxy exception. And I'm thinking probably there's just like an issue with it querying something and it freaked out so it gave you that error. Um, if Python throws an exception then it doesn't know what to do so it just gives you that page. So basically what you do is if you want it to be time based you can just put in uh, whatever you want into this blacklist. Um, you put a time and after the set amount of time it's going to just drop off and um, not be there anymore. If you want to do a more permanent type of block you could put it in a um, what I call like a pre-proxy exception, which is actually telling the proxy to not load it into memory when it starts. So this would require a restart of the proxy, whereas this one doesn't. It usually like all of the modules are within about five minutes of updating. So wherever you catch it in that five minutes is when it's going to be updated. So you can expect it could also go maybe a couple minutes after when you wanted it to cut off too. Um, then you have the categories, which uh, currently these are the categories that I'm trying to target, uh, mainly because I think they're the most relevant. 
um, the big ones being these four over here, and uh, most likely these three being uh, on by default. Uh, Teen Top 50 is just for me to test. They're just like the top 50 websites teens go to or something like that um, based off of like Alexa. So I'm using it to test so I don't have to go to any of these sites. Um, and if there's issues, you know, and it ends up loading or whatever. Um, so all you have to do is you click on whichever one you want, click update. If you want to do keyword searches, that's what I was explaining. Uh, the keyword search looks something like this. Oh, let me pull it up. Um, uh, so this is like how my signatures work. It's really basic. I have the signature and then what it's associated with. So at, in the front, I just have these keywords and these are all just temporary. But what it's doing is for any given category, it's looking for this word in the domain. So instead of it being just a very uh, you know specific this domain only, if for example torrent is in the domain, it'll just block it because it's like, hey, this is most likely P2P. Why is torrent in the name? So um, that's pretty effective. And then um, these uh, TLDs uh, are like the top 20 most uh, known to be um, malicious, and then just like adult ones here. Uh, and then you can also create your own categories. I haven't tested this in a while, so I don't even want to add stuff. But basically, what you do is you name a category, then you can select it from here and uh, put domains and reasons why, and then they'll just show up down here. It shouldn't really be used too much just because, uh, like, there's other ways to go about it, like whitelisting or whatever, but the category can, our custom category can be effective. Um, let me show you reporting. So what I'm trying to do here is make the information very easy to look at for people who don't really know what's going on. I want them to know where, what happened, where they were trying to go, why it happened, when it happened, and what was the thing that happened, right? So like action blocked. So I'm not letting you do any like uh, manual queries of the database. You have these set queries and you can pick whatever one you want and it's gonna show you relevant information mainly related to domains or Tor. Uh, another kind of feature, let me pull that up, is logging. Uh, it's always gonna log blocked stuff, but you can enable full logging, which will uh, enable um, the firewall to log everything, every domain that goes through it. Um, Tor already does that by default, whether they're blocked or not. Um, so let me go back into reporting. Okay, so like here you could see, I have a couple things in here already that got blocked. But if I go to um, domains viewed by time, then you could see here's just random domains. When I was trying to go to Facebook, all of these were also looked at um, and all allowed through. And of course, you can see them combined. Um, uh, one cool little thing that I think makes this a little bit more um, easy to use is if you get hit by any malicious category, um, I'm, I'm going to notice it, well, firewall is, and it's going to put you into an effect, infected hosts list. And then what it will do is it'll put it here and it's not a permanent thing. It's actually supposed to be acknowledged. So you could just click a button next to it that deletes it whenever you take care of your computer. And then if you see it again, well, I guess you didn't fix your computer. But what it's going to do is it's going to put it here in this thing and also in the dashboard, this card right here is going to get um, replaced with um, potentially infected host. It's going to show you the IP address that um, uh, reached out to that domain, the MAC address, and um, it has a tie-in with DHCP. So let me show you that. If you make a DHCP reservation, you could select a user. So if you go and actually make a reservation for all your computers and you put the user correctly of who it is, the infected host is going to look at this and go, okay, well, this is the Mac, so it was Steve or whoever's um, computer. So it's a little bit more um, easy for people to go, oh, that's this computer that is having an issue versus having to go around and look for the computer that has the problem. So that's kind of like more of the main features. I guess I can come into the advanced part real quick. This is just a stateful firewall, so you can make firewall rules. Any rule you make will not affect the actual main system. Um, what I mean by that is I have all these custom IP table chains 
and I'm not letting you edit those directly. So you, you will not be able to lock yourself out of the web um, uh, admin. It's gonna get put in its own chain and those are not looked at when coming to the web admin. Um, so it's, it's very safe. You could still, you know, I guess screw up other traffic going out to the internet or whatever, but of course all traffic is uh, blocked by default coming inward, so to you. Um, this is only gonna, would be used for outbound traffic. Um, and then NAT rules, this would be if you did want to open up a port coming in because of like you have a, you know, a VPN server or something that you want to connect to when you're away or whatever. And then the Tor blocking, of course. And then this is something I'm still working on and this is kind of messed up at the moment, but um, it's kind of just like a curfew where if you want the internet to shut off for um, your kids or whoever at a certain time every day, you could uh, select the time. Um, like 8 p.m., how long you want it to be, and then every day it'll just disable the internet. Um, once the timer runs out, it'll put it back on. And you will bypass it if you're in the whitelist. So real quick, I'll just uh, kind of go to a domain and show you what I mean. Um, so let's see here. I just want to make sure um, I have the right category enabled. Okay, I have this on. I don't have keyword search. Um, so I'm going to enable that real quick, and then I need to restart the proxy. This is also um, needs to restart the proxy if you change um, services. Restart. All right. So what I'm going to do is I have a list of domains that are in that list. I just need to pull up real quick. Um, okay, mad.org is one of them. So I'll just go to that, and hopefully, you know, live demos could be... Um, pretty punishing so Oops. Linux is this Linux box is a little weird it takes a little bit extra time to query things um, for some reason I think it's related to some of like the systems it has under it but anyway so you see it got the block page it redirected you um, to the block page and then if you click more details it'll tell you why this will then be in the reports as well um, so to go a little bit further, I'll show you what it's like if you do a keyword. So um, do I have, I'll just do teen again because that one's enabled for sure. So it's not really checking to see if the domain is legit. It doesn't care. If it sees a keyword, it's going to block you for even attempting. Um, so I'll just put some random uh, strings uh, in here. I'll put teen in the middle and then I'll just do like dot com and this should also get caught so there it is so what it's doing is it's showing you the actual domain they went to even though it's not a real domain you can see that if it was a real domain it would have got blocked I just put gibberish in here it's randomly in the middle it's not using regex it's using something different um, that's like kind of a built-in function of Python um, and then it, it you know lists the associated uh, category that it is and um, okay let's see here lastly um, is the TLD blocking uh, settings? No, no, categories, TLDs. Okay, uh, I don't know of like any domains specifically in here, so I'm just gonna put like whatever one and just do dot ads. Um, let's see. There you go. And so basically, this is nuking that entire TLD. Uh, it doesn't care. Um, if you need something in that TLD, you can always whitelist it. So basically what the system is doing is it's going to the most, uh, it's going to go from the domain you have to more specific. So if you have google.com, google.com and any subdomain is going to be blocked. If you block www.google.com, only that subdomain will be blocked. And if you just type in google.com, it'll go right through. So it's going more specific. Um, so, you know, blocking off the TLD is very general. So, I mean, everything in there is going to be blocked. But you could put a whitelist for a specific domain in that TLD, and that would go through just fine. Um, also, a quick thing to note is I'm doing uh, TTL rewrites. What that means is uh, every time you query a, uh, a domain, you're, you're keeping um, the, uh, the query or the information basically in cache for however long the server tells you. For most things, it's an hour. For services like Google, it's like a minute. So I'm rewriting that to five minutes because let's say you wanted to block something just right now after it already been allowed. 
Well, the user might have it in their cache for an hour and it's not gonna be blocked for an hour. So now I'm doing it every five minutes. That's part of the whole five minute thing I was talking about. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, there's a lot more potential that could be um, put into it. And most of the features that I have now are for people asking, hey, can it do this? And I go, no. And then later that day or week, I decide to implement that. So it was what I intended on doing was not even what it is now. It's much more feature filled than what I expected it to be. Um, and it's gone through um, many changes. So you can see here's the reporting. Let's go back and see how many actual just ran. You could like see how powerful it is when when you look at how many domains your computer just inherently uh, um, calls out to for no reason. I guess it's not a whole ton. I haven't really been doing a lot of searches though. But yeah, just, you don't like, this is, you know, what, two, two, three times more than the amount that I've actually searched myself. And so it could just be a malware in there doing it too and you would never even know it. Uh, anyways, thanks for taking the time to watch this and uh, feel free to ask any questions. I'm just gonna like put this in the edit of the uh, post um, and hopefully, I, hopefully this um, cleared up some uh, things about what it can or can't do. Thanks.